Well, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on what part of the country you are calling in from. We want to welcome you to the Finance of America Mortgage Wholesale Busting BA Home Loan Misconceptions. My name is Ginger Bell, and I will be your host, hostess uh, for the webinar today. As you're getting logged in, I have put all of uh, the links to the presentations up on the chat box for you so you can access those there and then of course I will be sending them out via email uh, it'll come out tomorrow uh, through the same system that you are registering and getting logged into this zoom webinar so you can wait for that tomorrow and I'm also recording it so if you want to listen to it again or if you have somebody that happened to miss it then uh, you can forward that on to them as well so we want to welcome you and to thank finance of America mortgage for uh, putting this event together and this is one of several in a series we've been doing over the last several months to provide education to our mortgage broker and non-delegated correspondent originators. And so for those of you who have been on the call before, Jennifer, I see you're already telling me you're from California. Yay, our West Coast is checking in. So I always like to make sure that you all can hear me. And so you have a couple of different options for listening. We do have everyone muted. And we're going to be limited as far as time for questions today because I have a lot of material I'm getting through. So if you do have questions that come up regarding VA, you want to talk to your Finance of America account executive. You can listen either uh, by calling in. There's a phone number. It is in the email that you use to log in. You can call in and listen on the phone or, <clears throat> excuse me, you can listen on your computer as well. For those of you who are joining for the first time, we do have a couple of different ways you can ask questions. One is in the chat box, which you see on your panel there, the Zoom panel, or in the Q&A. And it says Q&A, so you can type in questions there. And uh, Robin, thank you. <laughs> I always ask that. Can you all hear me? Because I'm, you know, talking to myself here. I see a lot of you raising hands, so that's good. I see that you're raising hands, um, so that's perfect. Let me know where you're from. I always like to know how the weather is across the country, and I think it's kind of mixed across the country. Uh, kind of cool here in the Pacific Northwest, and uh, that's kind of welcome. So, Greg, I see you. Okay, you all are checking in. That is fabulous. So, I am ready to go. I want to share with you some upcoming webinars that we do have that are coming up in July, and uh, you'll want to hop on. You can register for all of our events for Finance of America Wholesale at famueventscom And uh, that's the link there. It has a calendar. We also post some other industry events that we're participating in. But we have a couple of webinars coming up in July. The first is July 17th, and that's how to complete the FHA 203K maximum mortgage worksheet from our last webinar we did on the 203K renovation loan. We had a lot of you asking how to complete that, so we're going to go through that. And then uh, July 25th, towards the end of the month, we will have another FHA webinar. I'm going to talk about FHA expertise and what you can do to be able to build education programs, marketing programs, just basically building your FHA business. Um, my name is Ginger Bell. I'm an education specialist. I do a lot around training. And so I'm going to share some of my tips that I use for scheduling um, live events. If you want to do first time home buyer events, I'm actually going to teach you some of the tricks that I use for recording videos, including some animation videos. I have some really cool software that I've been using for some of my clients. And so you want to hop on that presentation. Obviously, it's going to cover more than FHA, but we are going to focus on FHA. So all of the information will um, be sent out to you. It's in the chat box. You can access the slide deck that I'm using today. And then I've also created a, a presentation that you can use for real estate agents. And I'm going to show you what that looks like when we get to the end. And then I've also created a flyer. So you can just drop your information in there and you'll have something that's easy to use. We will send a follow-up email. It'll come out tomorrow sometime. So if you can't access it in the chat box, uh, the links, um, then you can let us know. And yes, Julie, um, this is being recorded for anyone who cannot attend, and we send out a link to that as well. And I also post it on YouTube. So lots of ways for you to learn about um, great programs. And our focus right now, actually, uh, for the summer is on FHA and VA. 
And so that's what we wanted to do in this session is talk about VA. Now, I am not an originator. Um, I have been account executive, um, sales manager, worked in wholesale all of my career in uh, the mortgage industry. And I think we, I was talking to Sue Woodard the other day and we said, we stopped counting after anything over 20. So it's like, it's been a while. And for a lot of you as well. But, you know, knowing the secrets of being able to position yourself as an expert is important. And for me, um, I'm an education specialist. So I have taken the opportunity to write a couple of books. Um, one is Success Today that I wrote with Brian Tracy a few years ago, and I have my new book that's coming out. Hopefully, for those of you who are in California, you need to attend the California Association of Mortgage Professionals conference that's going on in San Diego. We're going to be doing a session there that talks about building your business. So a lot of great things that I've learned along my path of being able to be a best-selling author with some of these great um, leaders, true inspiration. And so I'm going to have some information on that um, coming out soon. And I'll probably do a special webinar in August that talks about the book that I did with Jack Canfield, which is on edu marketing. So with that, let's get started, shall we? I found this number and I thought it was very um, intriguing because, you know, for the years that I've done VA and FHA um, training, it's always surprising to me, and especially in talking to real estate agents, about how many steer away from VA and FHA. And it, you know, the numbers have not been huge for VA loans, but actually last year there were over 740,000 homes that were guaranteed by the VA. So that's really cool because it makes it the largest year in the history of the VA program. So you all are doing a great job, but the reality is that there are over 22 million veterans in the US and only 1.65 million of those have active VA loans. So although we're making progress, we still have a long way to go. So whether you've been closing VA deals for 20 plus years or you're just getting started and you cannot afford to miss this opportunity to learn more about the VA home loan. So our mission, is to ensure that every veteran across America who's eligible for their VA loan can have access to the full scope of what the VA offers them as a home loan benefit. But the perception, and you probably know this as well, and I run into this um, oftentimes when I do presentations for real estate agents, that the VA transactions are not for the faint of heart. So sometimes real estate professionals think, have that perception. However, by providing them with education and resources and the information that we're talking about today, we can provide them with the proper tools and training to help them to be able to understand and use this important loan program to build their business for the long term. So the key is knowing how to help agents and sellers maneuver through the VA loan transaction and as well as helping your buyers pursue VA home loan opportunities. So it's really good skills to have in today's market, and it's critical to be able to properly serve the veteran community. This, these are the four top four um, VA misconceptions um, when I've surveyed uh, loan originators that I hear the most often. And so our goal today is to be able to debunk some of these VA misconceptions. Now, I know there's probably more, but these are the primary ones. The first one being VA turn times, the second VA appraisals, the third borrower qualifications, and then the fourth VA closing costs. And so let's get started on the first one. And as I'm getting started, I'm seeing some of you all type in scenario questions. Um, I am not able to answer any specific scenario questions that you have today. So if you do have questions like that, and Phil, I see a question, pretty, pretty in-depth question there. So I would recommend that you contact your Finance of America account executive, and they can help you through, especially a lot of the specific scenarios, because we want to get through the information for everyone today. So if you're typing in questions, I appreciate it. You can type those in. We do get them when you put them in the Q&A, and I can send them off. Um, but you want to make sure and, and really talk to someone, especially your FAM account executive. 
Okay, so let's look at myth number one. The VA home loan takes longer to close. And how many of you hear that? Raise your hand. Things you hear from the real estate agents, VA home loan takes too long. Okay, sellers think that too. And that's one of the misperceptions, right? So the reality is, and I'm a numbers person, so it's like if I have numbers to back something, then I feel confident in going out and especially debunking that myth. So let's do that right now. In December of 2017, not that long ago, the average VA home loan purchase took 49 days to close. Now that sounds like a long period of time, but reality is that closing in a month may not be possible for home sales in today's market, and we know that. And the statistics that we show here from Ellie May show the difference in closing times between loan types. It's really non-existent. So in December, 2017, 49 days to close for a VA home loan. That's only three days longer than the average overall and two days longer than home buying loans backed by the Federal Housing Administration, so FHA. This is per Ellie May's December 2017 Insight Report. So that's, that's the facts. All of these figures are down actually from the previous December when VA purchasing loans took 50 days, so one more day, um, which was two days longer than the overall average and only a day longer than FHA loans. So we've debunked that myth. doesn't exist. It doesn't take longer. Okay, a little bit longer. It's a couple days, but it's totally worth it. And especially when you're looking at, first of all, you're providing a benefit for our veterans. And then second, they're getting in for 100%. Um, so that's the first myth got that debunked. Now let's move on to the next one, and that is VA appraisals are harder to do. So how tough are the VA appraisal guidelines? And that's usually the first question. Any appraisal um, will help a lender determine a property's value. We know that. VA appraisals go beyond conventional appraisals. By doing so, they ensure that the home meets the VA's minimum property requirements. It's what's called MP. R's. So let's look at some of those MPRs. First of all, MPR establishes basic standards for a home and its content. So electrical and plumbing systems must be in good condition, roofs must be defect free, and basements must be dry. There are VA appraisal guidelines, and sometimes we think they can be strict, um, and perhaps maybe if you're looking at some you know, fixer-uppers that need a lot of work, it's not the best loan for that. But many of the guidelines for the military buyers provides safety and soundness. And that's really um, what it's all about. They're not as different from modern conventional appraisal standards, especially now when we're looking at how appraisals are with the housing market meltdown. So some of the differences between VA and conventional appraisals have really been leveled. So the first thing is the purchase property must be residential. So that's one of the first requirements under the minimum property requirements. So this means office buildings or storefronts cannot be financed through VA loans. If any part of the property is designed for non-residential purposes, so for example, if it's a hair, a home hair salon, that portion must not exceed 25% of the total floor area. So that is one of the requirements under the minimum property requirements. Another requirement is, is the property must have space necessary to assure suitable living, sleeping, cooking, and sanitary facilities. So this means you must make sure that the home has all of these things, so adequate kitchen, bathroom, and sleeping areas. The next minimum property requirement, mechanical systems must be safe and have reasonable future utility. So this means electrical and plumbing systems must be in good repair and have some usable life re remaining. So, you know, if you're talking to a borrower, you want to make sure that they walk through the home, they test all the light switches, they review the seller's disclosures to determine if there's any electrical issues that have been identified. Those kind of things can be taken care of, but you want to make sure that it meets that minimum property requirement. The next minimum property requirement is heating must be adequate. 
So the home's heating system must be safe, must be adequate. Any unvented space heaters must be inspected by a heating contractor uh, equipped with an oxygen sensor and meeting all building codes or manufacturer's recommendations. Homes that use wood-burning stoves as a primary heat source must also have a conventional heating system that maintains a temperature of at least 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So those are the things if you're in an area, you know, my brother lives in Montana. This is not an uncommon thing here. So they, you know, he has wood-burning stove. If it's a primary heat source, they also have to have conventional heating. So those kind of things are important if you're in those kind of areas. The next MPR, property must have domestic hot water, continuing supply of safe drinking water, and a safe method of sewage disposal. So the water quality must meet local standards, and it's usually set by the health department, and the sewage system must adequately dispose of the waste. Next MPR is the roofing must be adequate and provide future utility. So this means the roof condition will be examined by the VA appraiser, and when a defective roof with three or more layers of shingles must be replaced, old shingles must be first removed. So this is important to know if you have a borrower that's looking at an older house, one of those things. This is where you get to be obviously the expert to let them know that if they are looking at an older home, then they need to be aware of what's happening with the roof and if there are issues that may be something that will need to be repaired. The next MPR, crawl space must have adequate access to be clear of all debris and be properly vented. So any excessive dampness or pooling of water in the crawl space must be corrected. Leaky basements can be a deal breaker for many VA house hunters. So, you know, depending on what part of the country you're in, if you have an issue as far as dampness, you want to let your VAs know um, that they need to be able to have that corrected. Next MPR is properties must have safe access from the street. So this means properties must have private driveways or permanent easements to allow access. For most areas, not a big issue. But again, maybe in Montana, this is something that they would need to be aware of. And again, depends on your area. Next NPR, properties must be free of any hazards which adversely affect health and safety of the occupants. Now, this is a rather vague statement that's made by the VA. And the VA does not include specific criteria that must be met under this category. So hazards can be left to the interpretation of the appraiser. So if anything comes up in the appraisal, you want to make sure that that's identified and can it be fixed. The next MPR is no defective conditions which impair the safety, sanitation, or structural soundness of the dwelling. So VA appraisers are advised to watch for defective construction, for poor workmanship, for evidence of continuing settlement, excessive dampness, leakage, and decay. And again, it all go back, goes back to assuring that the home is safe and sound. The next MPR, lot must be graded so that it prevents pooling of water on the site and drains water away from the home. So poor drainage can lead to expensive exterior and foundations problems. So you want to look for homes that are properly elevated. And if there are issues, those will probably need to be taken care of. Next NPR, no wood destroying insects, fungus growth, or dry rot. Now, a termite inspection may be required in your area, and if you're not sure if it's a requirement, you can talk to your FAM account executive and they can let you know. Properties with termite infestations must be treated and then reevaluated to garner VA approval. So again, check with your FAM account executive and they can answer any questions you have regarding termite inspections. And then our last MPR, 
This is about lead-based paint. It must be evaluated and corrected. So this normally happens in properties that are built before 1978. And if they are, then they must be inspected for lead-based paint. Any surfaces with cracked or chipped lead-based paint must either be scraped and repainted, covered with drywall, drywall, or totally removed. So again, these are properties that are built before 1978. So these are all good things to know, and I've included this in the slide deck that I'm giving you for your uh, real estate agents. So this is a great presentation for you to run through and just to let them know, hey, these are some of the requirements. So, um, and I'm seeing questions in here as far as termite report. It's going to be, it depends on the area you're in as far as where it is required. So I'm going to go on to the next myth. Borrower qualifications are harder. And the reality is that the standards for VA home loans is the veteran must have satisfactory credit, they must have sufficient income, and they must have a valid certificate of eligibility or COE to be eligible for a VA guaranteed home loan. And then the home must be for personal occupancy. Now that's a pretty broad statement and it's very similar to what we see in a lot of our other guidelines for other programs. But let's look at the VA guidelines. First one is eligible veteran who has available entitlement. The, circ the second is the loan must be for an eligible purpose. The third is they must occupy as a primary residence within a reasonable period of time after the loan closes. So it has to be um, for owner occupied. They must have a satisfactory credit. And so VA doesn't have a set um, credit score, but investors do. So again, work with your account executive and go through any areas where there is uh, credit risk or any questions you have regarding guidelines. And we're going to get into, we're going to do some more VA webinars over the coming months where we'll get into the specifics as far as um, credit scores and requirements and, and if they've had bankruptcies and DROGs. Um, so you, if you you know, have an immediate question, contact your family account executive, but we will be hitting these um, in upcoming webinars. So make sure and look for those. Next, the income must be stable and sufficient to meet the mortgage payments and cover the cost of owning a home while taking care of other obligations and expenses and still have a money, money left over to support their family. And so there are specific um, really cool things with the VA that if they get a housing allowance, then you can use part of that. I mean, there's, there's calculations involved. And again, we're not going to go through all of this right now in this webinar. And, but we will have uh, that information coming up in uh, upcoming webinars. But if you do have questions regarding any of the guidelines, credit risks, things like that, contact your FAM account executive and they can go through specific scenarios with you. So let's look at some of the important features of VA. First of all, it provides a maximum guarantee that's up to 25% of the Freddie Mac maximum conforming limit. There is no down payment required. So this allows for up to 100% financing. They must, they have the ability to finance the VA funding fee and the VA funding fee is standard in all VA loans. They can finance that and they can have either a fixed or an ARM option. There are no interest-only options. There's flexible credit standards, and again, talk to your family account executive, go through your specific scenario, they can help you out with that. The other thing is there's no mortgage insurance premiums. So unlike conforming, unlike FHA, where they have that MI, doesn't exist here. So you look at, we've got 22 million who are eligible for this, and yet only 1.6 million are actually utilizing it. And a lot of the reason why is they don't explain this, um, the benefits of the VA home loan, that when they're going through boot camp or even when they get out. So it's one of those things that it's up to us as an industry to be able to provide this education to them and really share this opportunity of the VA home loan.
So let's talk about closing costs because this is another myth and a lot of people say, oh, it costs more for the sellers. Well, under VA, VA has what they call allowable fees and non-allowable fees. And the VA's goal is to protect veterans when it comes to closing costs. So therefore, the VA home loan and the VA defines allowable fees that can be charged to the veteran and then the non-allowable fees which cannot be charged to the veteran. So if a fee is not on the approved list, then it is considered to be a VA non-allowable fee. Anyone other than the veteran buyer can pay for those fees. So this includes the seller, which is most common and preferred, the agent or the lender. So let's look at that list of allowable fees. Lender, 1% origination fee, lender discount points, appraisal, uh, credit report, prepaid items, which includes taxes, insurance, prorations, funding fee, title insurance, recording, repairs of any kind. So these are what is considered allowable fees. Now let's look at the VA non-allowable fees. So these are lender fees that aren't points including underwriting, application, processing. Everything escrow, which is your base escrow fee, notary, doc prep, or archiving. Title fees other than title insurance, which is the wire fee and the sub escrow fee. And then agent fees, which include transaction coordinator, short sale negotiator, and termite inspection. So again, these are the kind of fees. And if you haven't done a VA loan, you want to make sure and work with your FAM account executive to go through what this looks like. And we will be doing more webinars, going through explaining this, kind of pricing things out, things like that. And let us know what questions you all have. Um, if you have a you know, certain specific that you think would be helpful for you to understand or for us to be able to provide information for you to go out and to do training on, let your FAM account executive know because those are the kind of resources we want to be able to make available to you. So let's talk about seller concessions. A seller concession is anything of value added to a transaction by the seller for which the buyer pays nothing additional and which the seller is not customarily expected or required to pay or provide. Seller concessions are limited to 4% of the value of the home. And the reasoning in this is in some localities, um, sellers offer concessions as a competitive tool. And we see this for builders too. So in extreme cases, the concessions may entice someone, um, and this is VA thinking that perhaps an unqualified veteran, it may entice them into mortgages that they cannot afford. So the concessions may disguise the veteran's inability to qualify for the loan. For example, and um, this doesn't happen very often, but I know actually it was in San Francisco a couple years ago and somebody was selling a condo and they were throwing in the ha a, a car and they had, I think it was a little Fiat because they had a tiny little parking space. And so they were offering this car. So that would be something that the VA would not allow, offering a $50,000 car along with the purchase of a home. That would be a very clear violation of this philosophy. So the key is concessions do not include payments of normal buyer's costs. So you look at that, seller concessions include, but are not limited to, the VA funding fee, property taxes and insurance, um, gifts such as a refrigerator, washer, or dryer, or TV, so things that are included in the home, points, pay off of um, credit balances or judgments on behalf of the buyer. But seller concessions do not include buyer's closing costs. And so when you look at that, a seller credit, it's common for VA borrowers to have the seller pay most, if not all, of their closing costs. The seller credit has no limit. It can be over 6%, but the concessions can only be 4%. So it's important to remember when they're going in and negotiating. And again, understanding that is important for real estate agents. So if you have a certain scenario that you're going through, contact your FAM account executive. They can help you go through that and the difference between the seller concessions and the seller credits. 
So let's move on to some other VA myths. And when you look at some of the myths that we just talked about, um, those are common as far as qualifying, but oftentimes there are additional myths, and this is even in the eyes of the veteran, that they don't realize that these are actually not necessarily true. So let's look at some of these, the, these myths that people may think. Um, VA loan eligibility expires. The VA can only be used once. The VA is only for first time home buyers. You can only have one VA loan at a time. After a VA foreclosure, you can never use it again. The program is only for veterans, not active duty. And then oftentimes you may have someone ask, saying, hey, I had a recent bankruptcy, a foreclosure, a short sale, and I'm not gonna qualify. That's another VA myth. Um, Another is a VA offer will always cost the seller more money. Another is a buyer going with 100% financing must be broke. Okay, the reality is these are all myths and they're all false because they can use their eligibility over again. Um, it can be used several times. It is not for first-time buyers. And... The VA, depending, and it's all based on eligibility, they may have one VA loan and be able to actually get another one depending on their eligibility. Um, VA foreclosures, again, this has to, to go through timing and there's guidelines with it, but if you have someone that has had a VA closure, a foreclosure, doesn't mean they cannot get another loan. Um, active duty. We have a lot of active duty and this is program is not only for veterans, it is also for active duty. Bankruptcy, there are seasoning requirements for foreclosure, short sales, things like that, but it doesn't completely knock them out of qualifying for a VA loan. And the reality is it doesn't necessarily cost the seller more money, and it's all through negotiation. And we know that the VA home loan provides a huge benefit, and if you have the opportunity to buy a home 100% down and have no MI and you are a veteran or active duty or qualify for the VA home loan, this is a great opportunity. And so in putting this information together, our goal was to really get you thinking about providing education to your real estate agents. For every borrower that you meet with to ask them, and this is something I always teach in everything that I do, is your first question should be, have you served? And if they say yes, the next response is, thank you for your service. Because it truly is a service that they're doing. And that's part of the benefit of the VA home loan. So think about the next time you're talking with a real estate agent. Recommend that they might consider asking potential buyers the same question. Have you ever been in the military? And let them know that the reason to ask this is that many veterans have not considered taking advantage of their VA home loan benefits. And to let them know that by working with you as an agent, that you have access to this and you know many of the advantages of the program and all that it offers to veterans. So by making this a part of the standard questions that you ask, that you teach your agents to ask, then you can be sure you're providing the veterans in your community. And that's really what this is about, guys, is you being an independent originator serve a community and it's all part of your community. So you're serving your community with the highest level of service and opportunities possible. Many sellers who reject an offer contingent on VA financing do so because they operate under a number of misconceptions and a lot of the misconceptions we have just debunked on this webinar today. So what I want to share with you is, okay, how do you go out and create a VA campaign? And it begins with working with real estate agents. So I'm providing all of you with a VA Realtor slide deck. It is an open PowerPoint slide deck. I have many of the slides, not all the slides in here, and I'll show you what it looks like in a sec. So you can go in, personalize it. You can drop your photo in there, your contact information, set up use, meetings for this. Um, the webinar I'm doing next month, and we're gonna focus on FHA, but you can use what I'm gonna teach you for anything, whether it's FHA, VA, whatever you're working on. But there is huge power in education, and that's why at Finance of America, we've provided you with 
resources. So FAMU, we have um, Finance of America University. It's all online. It's available 24-7. There's uh, training in there on all the VA programs. And so VA, we also have training on FHA, all the webinars we do. But we also have um, flyers in there so you can grab those, personalize those. But you want to contact your Finance of America account executive. If you, you don't have access to our uh, Finance of America University at FAMU, contact your Finance of America account executive. There's a code that they'll give you and it's free to sign up. We're, only wholesale lender that provides this education to you for not only the systems that Finance of America provides you with, but also all these loan programs. So it's a great benefit to you. So you want to hop on there and uh, get registered. I have all of the previous recordings that we've done, our whole independent series we've done, the last FHA renovation. I mean, there's a ton of resources in there. So hop on there and poke around and see if, you know, what you can use to be able to help you in your business. And that's really our goal in doing this, is providing you with information. So our upcoming webinars in July, we're going to take a little break for the 4th of July, and I'm actually taking off the second week of um, July and going to, of all places, Galveston, Texas. I don't know if anyone ever been there. Make some recommendations for me of things to see. We're doing a family reunion there. I just know it's going to be hot. Um, but you can attend upcoming webinars, so July 17th how to complete the FHA 203K Maximum Mortgage Worksheet, which is the foundation of your renovation home loan. And then July 25th, I'm going to be doing the FHA expertise, so providing education, marketing, and how to build your FHA business. And again, I'm going to share with you a lot of resources, how to create um, videos, how to set up uh, live uh, events, how to handle registration for that. I'm really super excited about this um, webinar that I'm doing on the 25th because that gets into so much of my expertise as an education specialist in the industry. And again, a reminder, um, you can click on the links that are up there. Um, it has the slide deck, presentations, the open uh, presentation, and a flyer. I'm also going to send out an email to you as well. So I'm going to take a quick second, and I'm seeing you guys have done such a great job as far as um, questions in here. And because we are so, so short on time, I'm not going to be able to answer the questions. So all of you that put your questions in there, your, as soon as you get off the webinar, call your FAM account executive, and they can answer those questions for you. Um, oh, and you're not seeing the links? Okay, let me put the links up here again. Okay, now can you see the links? So you just click on those, and then you should be able to download those. And let me know if, if they're all working for you, if somebody clicks on them and has figured out how to do that. Um, while you're doing that, I'm actually going to hop over to the other presentation that I made and be able to show you uh, what that looks like. So here you've seen, this is your realtor presentation right here. So what I have here, um, and I'll just go through it real quick. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but this is where you can drop your information in here. So put your nice smiley face there, fill in this information, put your company logo there. And then I've included all this information in here that we've gone through, bump, bump, bump. And also, I'll show you this little thing. So I put some little notes in here so you can see that. So it's not everything that's on the slide. If you want to copy and paste it on there, you can, but it gives you an opportunity to talk about some of the things too in more detail if you want to do that. So you have that um, there for your presentation. And then this is this, the um, flyer that I made for you. And so again, put in your logo here, put in your contact information here. I've already included the equal housing opportunity, which you all are brokers and non-delegated lenders. So this is the logo you have to use to be compliant. And then insert your company disclosures here, which means, um, and your company probably already has that. If they don't, this is your licensing information that you need here in the states you lend in. Your company NMLS ID number, um, your LO NMLS ID number needs to be on all your marketing that you're doing and then your phone number here. So make sure you fill out that information. Hey, this is a great flyer if you're doing any kind of first-time homebuyer webinars. 
um, are uh, open houses. Sorry, I'm on a webinar thing here. Um, then these are the kind of things that you can do. We did this for the last webinar that we did for FHA, and uh, and we'll do that again. So, um, and I'm seeing some comments, blah, blah, blah. Don, we'll get back to you on that one. Um, as far as any other questions that you have. Um, and so, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of scores and everything in here. So, guys, I'm going to remind you, um, for specific scenarios and questions that you have, please contact your FAM account executive. So that's really the goal in putting all of this information together is to provide you with an overview of what this is and then to be able to, um, to give you some of the resources and tools that will help you as far as um, getting out and educating. So I am going to sign off. I want to thank you all for attending the webinar today. Make sure and register for upcoming webinars. And if you do have specific questions, please call your FAM account executive. They are happy to help you with everything that you need. Um, if it's a question regarding VA, FHA, USDA, and all the programs that FAM offers. So thank you all for attending. I wish you a great holiday for the 4th of July next week, and I will see you on the next webinar. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.